Thank you, Secretary Laird. Appreciate the comments, and uh, we do intend to get on with it. So um, I'm going to talk just briefly about um, some of the progress we've made since we launched the Watershed Improvement Program in, in March of 2015. The handout that you all got has got a kind of a little roadmap for some of those things. So I'm going to touch briefly on, on a few of the key things that, from our perspective, have, have certainly been progress, and, and not to take credit for them necessarily, but I think to acknowledge that there's a lot of the partners that we are up here at this day, a lot of you in the room who have helped to, to uh, change the dialogue and, and I think change the, um, uh, the reaction to the situation that we face. Um, we've been working to try to better answer the question of how big is the restoration need? What's it look like? How much of this and how much of that and how much is it going to cost? So Barney mentioned that the Forest Service has been going through that process and it's been a, kind of an evolution to get to a place where we had numbers that I think everybody felt comfortable with. We've been working with other partners to try to gain as best uh, the best information we have. And a um, funny thing is starting to happen now. We're actually starting to get people ask us the question. Because for a long time, Barney and others, it was kind of like we were asking each other the questions, right? But it's like, seriously, we need to be ready for this. And we're beginning to, 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 to have people pay attention, as the Secretary said, to this, to this region in a way that we haven't seen before. So... Um, we're not quite where we'd like to be, but we feel like we're, we're well down that road and have, and have kind of um, um, got a head start, at least, in being able to, to really be able to quantify kind of what the need is and, and what we need to do about it. Um, we have seen um, some increase in investment, one of the things, one of the key components of the Watershed Improvement Program. Um, last year's, um, this year's, governor's, but this year's budget, um, CAL FIRE received uh, $220 million in greenhouse gas reduction funds, now a part of the California Climate Investment Program, um, to put out on the ground. And they are going through the process of evaluating, I hear, about $335 million worth of applications, um, proposals. Um, but it's some real investment. And we've seen um, within our region, last year we were successful in being awarded one of those uh, GGRF grants uh, from CAL FIRE. So um, Proposition 68 is on the ballot. State official, I can't take a position on that, but there's significant resources um, in that measure as well that could be put on the ground to, to uh, increase the pace and scale of restoration. So we definitely feel like there's been progress in that regard. On the policy front, um, since we last met, actually, the Public Policy Institute of California issued a report on forest health forest issues, a well-respected policy group in Sacramento. Um, and I, I don't want to say they stole our stuff, but the messaging is pretty darn close to what we've been saying for a while. So we were, we were pleased that they talked to a lot of different folks and came to a lot of the same conclusions. Um, the Little Hoover Commission released a report earlier this year, um, and I would say kind of the same thing. Talked to a lot of different folks about this problem and came to a lot of the same conclusions. And um, as the Secretary um, teased, we're close. Right, Kaylee, to a forest carbon plan release that um, that <laughs> that close um, that I think likewise will will tell the story that is very consistent with what we've been saying. So it, it's I think heartening to see that we are we're seeing the kind of policy alignment that we are seeing, and I think it it, it bodes well for us, you know, continuing to make progress on some of the key policy issues that we're needing we need um, to address. Um, the other kind of key pillar of the the, the whip has been increasing infrastructure. Um, and in that front, we, we haven't been seeing the progress we'd like. We've um, seen a little bit, um, a new uh, reoperation of a biomass facility in, uh, in Loyalton in Sierra County, which I think is close to turning the wheels, correct, Supervisor Ron? Getting close. Um, but we've also seen the challenges of even came, maintaining the infrastructure we have. So that becomes one that, um, while I think the policy discussion has certainly moved forward, we haven't quite seen the um, the progress we'd like. Um, and lastly, I'd mentioned the, the Tahoe Central Sierra initiative that uh, Barney talked about. Um, it was um, at the urging of my counterpart in the Tahoe Conservancy, Patrick Wright, that we look at this part of California's landscape, of the Sierra Nevada landscape, kind of uh, erase that imaginary line that separates uh, the Tahoe Conservancy from the Sierra Nevada Conservancy, and think about the landscape, and pick a place where we felt like we have opportunities to explore how to do business differently. We've got the right partners. We've got the right efforts underway. Um, so we've got a great partnership there that is outlined in the materials. Um, and we think it's, uh, well, it's hard when you're a regional organization to pick a place and focus um, um, a good portion of your energy there. We felt like it was both the right place and the right time to, to test some new ways of doing business that can be exported elsewhere while we continue to have programs up and down the Sierra. So 
I think we've, we feel like we've, we've seen progress. We, I think many of us feel are, are kind of at the edge of the wave. We hope we can catch it because I don't know that the alternative is necessarily very, I've never went surfing in my life, so that's a completely made up <laughs> metaphor. But there's an opportunity that we're, we're ready, to, we're ready to, to, to take advantage of. And we certainly um, hope that as the, the coming year plays out in the legislature and at the policy levels in Sacramento and in Washington that we, we see some more positive progress. Having said that, um, what we do annually is get here in a room and talk and share a lot of ideas and talk about the problem, but none of it matters if we can't make it real on the ground. So um, we're really pleased today to have um, a key partner in the Watershed Improvement Program that um, is the, the place in the Sierra Nevada right now that is the furthest along of actually taking the, the objectives of the Watershed Improvement Program, the, the things we've been talking about for the last three years, and making it real on the ground. So we are pleased to have Ellie Alana, who is the forest supervisor for the Tahoe National Forest. Um, the weight of the entire Forest Service is on your shoulders, so <laughs> no sweat. Um, but really, we want to give Ellie an opportunity to talk about what's happening on the Tahoe. And for those of you who don't know, I need to do this disclaimer, the Tahoe National Forest does not include Lake Tahoe. So those of you listening out there, grab a map real quick. There's another unit that does that. But, but it's a critically important part of, of the Sierra Nevada for a lot of reasons, but that river that is flowing out there a few hundred feet away is uh, joined a little bit further north by the American River, which is one of the major watersheds that the, for that, that the Tahoe National Forest is responsible for, for managing. So with that, thanks for being here, Ellie. Thanks. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, woo. Um, so that's a smooth start for me. Um, it's, uh, f first, thanks for having me. Uh, I, uh, I, I've always... Um, wondered what it would be like to sit there, but uh, one of these days. Um, so uh, first of all, I want to say that it's, it's really great working in California um, it, for the Forest Service and working in the Sierra Nevada, just because uh, it's nice working in a place where the people appreciate uh, and understand the importance of national forests. Uh, that's not the case everywhere. And, and not only do they appreciate what uh, natural forests do for the citizenry, but um, they're also willing to invest resources in the national forests, which is, um, which is really beneficial to us as we're trying to do a lot um, in the national forest these days. So I wanted to, before I launch into specific stuff on maps and, and things like that. Um, I, I wanted to just uh, tell you a little bit about um, what, what sort of brings us here and why it's a little bit different than what we've always done um, in managing a national forest. So um, back, actually before, starting in about 2010, the, the regional leadership in, in the Forest Service started hearing about some of the impacts that a changing climate was having on the landscape, some of the impacts that some of our previous management had uh, left on the landscape. Um, and we realized uh, at the urging of a lot of folks that we needed to um, really focus our attention on ecological restoration. And so in 2012, the Forest Service here in California um, did something that we haven't really done again since then, which was we all agreed on, a, on, a, on the intent to restore the ecological function and resilience of the national forests in California. We haven't come up with a, state, a, a statement that we all agreed on since then. Uh, I, I mean, I'm sure there are things we all agree on, but we haven't written it down in that way. Um, and and so, so I think that that's, that's important for you all to know that, that um, the national forests in California are, are really focused on ecological restoration. And soon after we made that commitment, um, a lot of our partners um, said, hey, w we've been telling you to do that for a long time. Um, or, you know, we want to be a part of that because we, we agree with what you want to do. Um, and the Sierra Nevada Conservancy is one of those um, that was there right from the beginning, um, trying to help us figure out how we could accomplish our lofty goals of restoring the ecology um, in the national forests. Um, so, so a, a few years ago, b before I was the forest supervisor, uh, Jim Branham and, and some of his staff came to the Tahoe and said, hey, we, we have this idea 
about um, trying to figure out what is everything that you, you say you want to restore the national forest. What, what do you need? What, what's it going to take? And you know, being the government bureaucrats that we are, we're so used to working in, in, in terms of what's our budget this year and what are the laws and regulations and handbooks tell us that we're supposed to do. And so when we were posed with this question, we we're like, well, um, what do you mean? And like, and so he said, well, you know, if you didn't have to worry about budget, if you didn't have to worry about um, all, all the laws and regulations in general, I mean, you still want to accomplish some of the goals of the, that legislation, but wh what would it take? What would that look like? And so, you know, we, um, we, we, we spent some time trying to take off those blinders, take down those sideboards, and, and figure out, well, what would we do if, you know, if, if we had the ability to restore the national forest um, without um, thinking about our budget and, and, and things like that? And so, so we came up with a big spreadsheet, um, of course, uh, and, um, and it had a whole lot of projects, um, and, and estimates of what it would cost. And, um, and, and we sort of had a couple of different scenarios. And, uh, and, and, and that, um, that was really actually helpful for us because you know, in, in, in order for us to think about big goals like changing how California's forests function, uh, preparing them for the next climate iterations, um, addressing some of the impacts of past management, we, we do need to think beyond the, the constructs of, of what we typically work in. So that was really helpful. Um, and so then, so then we started looking at the projects that we had going on on the landscape and how we went about doing our business. Um, and, and not so much how we design individual projects on the landscape, um, but really, where are we working? Uh, and, and, and so up, up on the, the screen here is a map of um, projects that we're currently implementing. And, and I wanted to just, to, so that, that's uh, this year. Um, and so what you can kind of see is it's kind of scattered across the landscape of the Tahoe National Forest. And um, and if you had looked at this map last year or the year before or the year before that, it would have even been more scattered across the landscape. And that's because for a long time, um, and this is not a, a, a judgment of, of anyone or of history, uh, the, the way that we figured out where we were going to work on the forest was the local forester or silviculturist or the local staff decided, hey, we want to work over here, or I've always wanted to go into this really cool place over here. And, and there, was, there was sort of no overall coordination. That doesn't mean that great things didn't happen, um, but, but it wasn't in sort of a coordinated strategic way. And you can kind of see that. Uh, I just want to use this laser pointer just to see if it works. No, it doesn't work. OK. Um, uh, so, uh, but you can kind of see um, some, some scattering of projects across the landscape. And, and that's the way it has been for a long time is, you, you know, maybe one forester really wanted to um, work on a stand that they had been developing, that they had planted in their early years, and they wanted to um, bring it into to a, a better condition. Or, you know, a community was particularly interested in having some treatments to protect their community from wildfire. So, 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 um, so that's how we went about planning our projects. So a after our initial exercise with uh, the WIP, um, we were like, well, so we have this big spreadsheet with millions and millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars of projects. What do we do now? Um, so, so we started thinking about the, the name of the program, the Watershed Improvement Program, um, and, and some of the conversations that uh, our regional leadership team has had um, about trying to 
be more strategic about where we work on the landscape. And so we decided to try and prioritize watersheds on the Tahoe National Forest. Now, of course, you can prioritize a watershed, prioritize your work and, and watersheds in a lot of different ways. Do you go where there's the largest fire danger? Do you go where there's the most tree mortality or where the forest is most uh, vulnerable to a changing climate, um, to the communities that are most at risk? There's a lot of different ways to go about this. And so we, we tried to incorporate a lot of those factors into uh, prioritizing our watersheds. And um, about a year and a half ago, um, what's up on the screen now, we, this is the uh, prioritization that we came up with. Um, and uh, I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. So, so um, down here in the American River watershed, which is in the southern part of that map, you'll see a big hole there. Um, and, and, and so I wanted to talk first about that because um, the, our session today started with fire. So in 2013, one of the fires that Barney didn't mention was the American fire, and, which for us was really big. It was 27,000 acres. And at that time, we were like, man, it's gargantuan. It's going to take years. And, and right in the middle of the fire, we thought, oh, man, we're going to have the biggest fire of the year. Um, you know, right by Sacramento, I was getting calls from people in Sacramento and in Reno on the same day, depending on which way the wind was blowing. And I was like, whew. And then on like the third or fourth day, all of the airplanes and helicopters, and there was like all of a sudden, like it was like this exodus. I was like, Where, where's everybody going? We have like the biggest fire in the state. And, and, and they're like, well, there's this fire down by Yosemite. Um, down on Stanislaw, and it looks like it's going to get really big. And it, and it turned out to be the Rim Fire, which turned out to be the largest fire in California history. Um, so anyway, that little circle in the middle of the American River watershed, uh, middle, middle fork of the American River watershed, is where the American fire was. And um, so that's why that's not in there. But um, so, so, we, so we put the, our priorities together based on a lot of things. Um, and, uh, and, and one of the things that I didn't mention was uh, some partner input as well um, from, from a lot of the folks that I've mentioned that are interested in healthy forests in California. Um, and so moving forward, here, here are the projects that we're planning. And you can kind of see that they're much more aligned with um, our priority watersheds on this map. Um, and, and, and these are the projects that we're planning on just for the next five years. Um, and, and if I were to add in our lofty goals for 10 years, it would uh, cover more of those yellow priority watersheds. Um, and then uh, if you, so this slide combines our planning and our implementation. And you can kind of see, I mean, it's never going to be sort of a perfect alignment of where we're planning, where we're implementing, and what our priority watersheds are. But I think you get the sense that um, we're really moving in the direction of focusing our work, our planning, and our impl future implementation in those, those watersheds and trying to make a difference in those places that, that we've prioritized uh, with, with the help of a lot of the folks in this room, actually. Um, so. I'm probably going to leave it there. And, and, and I guess the, the one thing I, I, I want to add is um, it, it really took a lot of you all to help us focus our attention um, in this way. Um, I think if it hadn't been for you all, we, we still would be kind of trying to do good things all over without um, with, without the focus that we're feeling right now. And, 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 and I'll also say that, um, that we, we've had, uh, w when you can present a vision for the next 10 years in, in a way that makes sense to people and in a way that they see that we can actually make a difference for the future, um, it, it attracts people to want to to work with you. And, and that's been uh, just a fantastic thing that's, that's really skyrocketed in the last couple of years. And um, so uh, if you are one of those people, thank you. If you want to 
join us in, in trying to restore these landscapes. We love partnerships on the Tahoe uh, and in the Central Sierra region, so um, come talk to me. And with that, uh, I think we're going to do questions and answers and that sort of thing. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Ellie. So yeah, so we want to start with, if anyone up here in the dais has any questions or comments, or Ellie, if he's not pointing the Sorry, you give me a toy, I'm going to play with it. Um, <laughs> anybody up here have any questions, comments? OK, we're going to throw it down to our board members in the front row there. Any of you have anything you'd like to, to say? Don't let him off too easy. Come on now. All right. Pressure's on the audience. Anybody here like to? Comment, questions? Just go ahead, Ellie. You can just... uh, do you have a recreational component to your planning that brings, if there's a shortage of recreational campgrounds in your national forest that I'm aware of, and snow parks and other amenities for the public? Is there a component for that in your plan? So that's a great question. Um, and, and it sounds like it's two parts. In, in, in my mind. One is we, we have a lot of recreation infrastructure that was built in the 50s and 60s, uh, and it is uh, A, starting to fall apart, and B, not necessarily designed in a sustainable fashion. So, um, so as we are working in these project areas, we're trying to look at the recreation resources that exist there right now. Um, and and see if, if we can make improvements to them. If you think that there's not a lot of money in the world for, for, for vegetation and uh, forest management type of work, recreation is really tough. Um, it's really hard to find um, resources to do recreation improvements. So we're trying to um, make those types of improvements in the areas where we're already working. Uh, we, we do have a really high demand for new um, Types of well, new new opportunities for uh, um, various types of recreation, um, and and I mean, I, I, one of the realities of prioritizing and focusing is that there are a lot of things that you end up not being able to do much with, and new campgrounds, new. Recreation infrastructure is one of those areas where we just we don't have the resources to do it, except through volunteer groups most of the time. Um, and and I would also say, you know, on the screen are the areas where we are prioritizing. I just want to also point out there are a lot of areas that 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 we won't be able to get to in the next ten years, and and um, and and that's just one of the 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 cost benefits that you go through when you're trying to make a difference in certain places with limited resources. Anyone else? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Bruce. Oh, you know, at, the be at, the <clears throat> at the beginning, you mentioned, you know, trying to think, OK, beyond th this year's budget, you know, if we, if we, what needs to be done beyond the, you know, beyond budgets and rules. But, you know, ultimately, you have to come back to what you can actually do. So I guess uh, you talked about getting partnerships. I mean, what are the resources? Do you have the resources to actually implement your strategic plan? And where is it coming from? And where are these? Some, what are some of these partnerships? Yeah. So um, so we identified these watersheds that are highlighted in yellow. And within those, you can see where we are focusing uh, our resources. Um, I wanted to, uh, so if you look in the south east corner of that map, there, there's a, um, an area called the French Meadows area. And that's an area where um, our partners are actually taking the lead in doing the planning and trying to find the resources to actually address that part, portion of the landscape. And um, David, I think it's about 25,000 acres, give or take, that uh, um, Placer County Water Agency, Placer County, the Nature Conservancy, and some other partners, American River Conservancy, are all helping restore, uh, develop a plan and raise money for the implementation uh, of the plan in, in that area. So we hope to do more of that. Um, that, that that's really, and, and then I'll also say our resources internal to the Forest Service, we're focusing on getting through the planning and regulatory process so that we can queue up. Well, shovel-ready uh, projects for folks 
because uh, we, we have found that um, people like to fund implementation a lot more than they like to fund getting through governmental processes of planning and environmental compliance. So we're trying to take on that burden and, and, um, and queue up projects for folks that, uh, that might want to fund implementation. Let me just pick, pick up on that briefly because I think it's a, it's a key point. I mean, we all, we all hear constantly that the state and federal government never has enough money to, to do the kind of work we need to do. And of course, I would suggest that's a bit of a fallacy. We're just spending it on the back end, right? We're spending it after the events occur. But in the mean, that's the way the world works right now, and maybe we can transition at some point. In the meantime, I think the, the key to what's going on in the Tahoe and in the Tahoe Central Sierra is it is kind of an all hands on deck, right? You see ownership map on this, and as you can see, it's very strategically laid out as a checkerboard, which nobody in their right mind would have ever would have ever done as at land management issues. But to Barney's point, there are forests, right? There are forests. So I think the funding question, one of the things that we thought was important for WIP is um, we need to better articulate what the need is. If all we're ever doing is what we can do with existing budgets, then we're never going to get there. So I think that's been a key part of trying to really better articulate the true need, and then, and also being able to talk about how a project fits within this landscape into the other work. Chief Pimmel likes to talk about spreading, I told you I was going to do this, right. spreading peanut butter across, thinly across the state, because the random acts of restoration, because that's what we could do with resources. This allows us to, um, to put clumps of peanut butter, so I'm not sure what the analogy would be, but it's a good color. Actually, it's a good color here, Ellie. So I think that's really a key component is we've got to think about this, not does the Forest Service have money to get this work done, but do we? And that's key. Did you have something, Don, your pet? Let's turn that on. So um, my question for you is I know that Region 5 of the Forest Service has reached out to tribes uh, in, the, in the last year uh, to do some planning and so forth and to talk about initiatives, but I'm wondering how Tahoe National Forest is working with tribes uh, to, to work on these strategic projects uh, in this area. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, uh, so I'll start with implementation, um, and and I think there are some folks here from the Moortown Rancheria. Uh, we've been working with them on implementation projects uh, starting last year, um, and and it's really gaining steam. I think um, from a planning perspective, we. We try and reach out. I, I think a lot of times the, our local tribes on the Tahoe are limited by the, the resources that they have to participate. Um, so um, we we talk with them uh, regularly, but um, I, we haven't gotten to a point where we can really fully integrate them into the planning process. Um, but on the implementation side, I think there are a, a lot of opportunities that are coming up, and, and more towns actually doing some great things with, by you know, hiring actually some of the local uh, tribal members where they don't have the capacity to put together, say, a full crew to, to do an implementation project, but more towns reaching out to them and bringing some of those folks onto their crews. So, so that's, that's really a, a, a neat program. Patrick. Maybe this is a question for Barney as well, but I'm intrigued by this question the gentleman raised about recreation and prioritizing. Um, to what extent do you have the flexibility or do you think there's any potential flexibility to choose fewer areas and do them more comprehensively? <laughs> and add recreation, add watershed restoration, add trails, add campgrounds, add what needs to be done. I imagine the Forest Service budgeting process today doesn't allow for that. But is there some potential for that and if not, or is, it, is, it, is there a transition where you could partner with, say, the Sierra Nevada Conservancy or local watershed groups in these areas where they could fill in those areas where you can't? So that's a great question. We, like I said, we have been trying to sneak, sneak it into the planning for our fire fuels and veg projects where we can. Um, and then... Um, and, and then our partners uh, have ideas, and, and you know, the National Forest Foundation has developed this cool new partnership with REI that we've uh, benefited, benefited from. But um, again, th those corporate partners and, and nonprofit partners aren't as interested in doing the planning work um, and, and the NEPA work. Um, so, uh, you, you know, I, be, beyond being opportunistic, um, I, I don't have. Uh, a good sense for how we're going to address that 
in, on a larger scale. But Barney, I don't know if you have anything on that. I think a big part of what Jim had said about us kind of doing it on the back end, you know, so for us right now, our 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 priority in the in the agency right now is is trying to get our landscape more resilient. And we're even changing, we're even doing our, our our work differently. We got our units zoned to see about trying to get to more acres being treated. The reality is there's more resources for that than there are for recreation. So alone in, in 2017, the region, the Forest Service in California spent $600 million on fire suppression. So let that number sink in a second. That number on suppression is bigger than our entire budget in the region, and we've got the biggest budget in the agency. And what happens is, is that $600 million comes at a cost to other programs, and recreation is that place that that, that takes a big hit. So I think for us is we're going to have to really be open to are there some other ways for us to engage with some other people and other groups that are interested in helping us in their recreation realm. But a part of it is, is that it's easy to put something new on the landscape. My question is, is who's going to help take care of it when we do? And that's a part of the problem that we're facing right now is that the infrastructure that we have across the landscape, our roads, facilities, rec sites, you name it, we, went, we just went haywire. We built a lot of stuff, and now we don't have the money to take care of it. So something new, Patrick, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm like, no, we can't, we, can't, we can't afford to do that right now. And there are some implications that come along with that. But um, continuing to say, yeah, it's not working for us. Okay, we've got time for one more question. We've got Supervisor Hanfeld here. <clears throat> I hate to throw a monkey wrench in this whole thing, but look, I, I like what you just showed me. I think that's great. I'm a private sector guy. I'm not really a, a political guy. And I see this, and it looks good, but <clears throat> have you actually done the work it needs to lay out what you need, when you need it, to get this stuff done? In my private sector world, that's what I do. Resources from every angle, private sector, and so on. And <clears throat> I was in, t in Chief Took's office two days ago, and, uh, and I challenged him on that in terms of the resources. And I mentioned Region 5 in particular, Barney. Uh, and I'm really worried about it, and, and my force happens to be the stand. And I've seen a brain drain in, in the uh, in the uh, talent that you guys have, uh, and I think you got going to have to go outside to get some of that. But I'm not sure that's all available either, and I'm not sure there's enough infrastructure, physical infrastructure, uh, in some places there is. My county's got a lot of it, but if we really were managing our forest, we wouldn't have enough. And a lot of the human infrastructure is aging, retiring, and dying. I think you've got to have a plan, and we've got to have a plan to rebuild it. It's a system, not only the forest system, but the system that supports that uh, is there. And I think we've got to lay those things out, Barney. Uh, what we need, when we need them, or we're going to find ourselves not ready to, to do things. Yeah. And that's what we're pushing on our MSA agreement right now. We're early in that game, but I'm pushing them to have a 10-year plan with the, the resources lined up so we know what we need when we need it and be ahead of the game. And I think you need to do that everywhere. Thank you. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Well, I just, you know, you, you asked about whether we knew what it was going to take and had in place what we needed to implement this. And, and I would say so far we're pretty encouraged. I mean, we're starting slowly and ramping up. I think one of the advantages when you when you lay it all out for the next 10 years is it gives folks that are potentially interested in working in this industry um, some idea for what we have planned um, and what they might be what kind of work they might be looking at um, and 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 also uh, you know the more folks you get involved, uh, um, we're finding that the, the more likely it is that folks will, will find the resources to get it done. And, and like I said, so far we're, we're seeing a lot of success in that. Um, you know, ask me again in eight years, and, and uh, hopefully I'll have a pretty good story for you. Well, let me just add one thing. <clears throat> that is, in the private world where I came from before I became a supervisor, you know, you got to put investment in this thing. A 10-year plan isn't enough. you got to be out 20 years or more so we can get a return on the investment. And so I think we got to work together to put the devils in the details and put all those details together and so we can give the, the other stakeholders 
who need to invest in what, wherever they are in the game, what they need to, uh, to do their part to make this thing happen. This is not the Forest Service alone, Barney. I buy in. This is the California Forest, and we, we all need to join the team, get on, but we've got to roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty and make it happen. Okay, I'm going to risk Mandy throwing her water bottle at me because I saw one hand go up. Did you have a question or a comment, sir, in the back? You. I think you had your hand up, right? I have several questions. Okay. I'm Randy Onomura, and we've been approaching the Forest Service, the tribes have, and if you work with them through your trust responsibility, and I've had this talk with Barney, we can fast track those NEPA uh, issues. Plus, you need to work with the tribes to restore the watershed. Plus, you need to go after SMUD, PG, and and all the other people who are taking the water, doing the damage to the meadows and to the trees, and make them pay. Okay? We are prepared to work with you, and we've been telling you that for years, but nobody's listening. To restore the land, cut the wildland fires coming through, if you allow us to do what we need to do for our responsibilities. Okay? And then working with other federal agencies through trust responsibilities to us by Congress, we can assist that instead of making this a state or a private thing as you have been since the beginning of the Forest Service. That's my question. And okay. Already okay. I was going to say, I think you answered them for us, so thank you. That was good. All right. You know, we'd like some answers, right? We would like some answers. I think we're all on the same page about the, the need to manage the forest and the opportunity to work with tribes. That's why we have representation up here, and I know um, we'd be happy to continue those conversations. We need to do it from the headwaters all the way out. Okay? We include the bay, the delta, as the headwaters. And that's the, the impacts and, and the negativity from privatization of everything on federal trust lands, if that makes any sense to you. And if it doesn't, we can sit down and discuss it. Okay, well, we're going to have Ellie sit down, whether he can discuss it at this point, hopefully um, um, move to the next item. But thank you for the comments.